Okay, we're all set. Okay, so uh, thank you guys for joining. Let's just go right into it. Let me move this out of the way. All right, so let's just start from the top. Um, obviously, the markets are gapping up. 36.71 currently for the SPY futures, up $18 or 0.5%. Um, opened up at 6 p.m. Eastern, so two hours ago when we're doing good off the, I guess you could just say, the vaccine news over the weekend and you know that being sent out. So that's something to look at going forward into this week. And uh, Moderna has vaccine news by the end of the week, possible uh, authorization to be sent out as well. So that'll be interesting too. Um, key levels I have here was the 3670, which we're at right about now. Not truly, we're kind of just sitting right here right now. So we have to, you know, see how it acts in the morning. We want to hold that area and push higher for a upside move. Breakdown of 3640 can push us down again into the 3620s and break under that 3620 puts us into 3580. Okay, so uh, let's go into the next one. Let's go into CRM. This is a long-term play that we're looking at here. Um, I'll be sending out the watch list soon. You could see the channel that I've drawn out here and you could see that it's truly respected it very well um, from top to bottom. And we're riding this channel down right now. And it looks like we're going to be getting a push up, you know, to levels up here, at least over the next couple of months. So we'll see how that plays out. And I'm looking for shares and possibly long-term calls on that end. Uh, for this one right here, I've seen a lot of other traders actually post about this one recently. And someone else brought it up in our chat. So this is why I added it. Um, kind of nice, you know, wedge forming here, I guess you could call it, or possibly even a flag setting up here and looking for a breakout over this like 63 level, pushing it to 65 and 70, going higher into all time highs. Uh, all time high here is around 69, uh, sorry, 6540, 6530. So yeah, pushing right over that 65 into the 70 range. And I'm looking at uh, January 15th, 70 calls for that. So getting, you know, four weeks out and kind of near money there. Uh, Jamaya, this is another one, the Amazon of Africa, or how I like to state it at least. Um, Long-term trend here, kind of like a, a megaphone going across all the way across. You can see we have a cup going across here and actually going even further is a larger cup. It may, yeah, here we go. If you want to consider this, you know, a major cup, it kind of is, and you got all-time highs over that over here at the 45 to 50 range, and we could be reaching that cup status over here, possibly forming a handle over here, or at least getting up there to form a handle over here. It depends how you want to see it. Um, I want to see this break over that 40 over the past uh, two weeks now. I want to get over that 40, 41, and push higher into this range around 45 to 50. I think this could be a hundred dollar stock over the next six months. Like I said, it's the Africa of Amazon. Their earnings have been increasing and growing um, exponentially. They've been, you know, turning around and they're going into profits within over the next maybe two to three quarters. So this is definitely something to look at going forward. And just to state, this was, you know, two dollars a couple months ago. Amazon started at two dollars once. I'm not saying this is gonna be an Amazon, but I'm just saying. This could definitely be a sixty to one hundred dollars stock, and I think it definitely you know reaches those levels. Yeah, especially when you look start looking into their business model, they they have their hands in everything. I would say they even have their hands in kind of a little bit more than Amazon because they're working with you know an economy that they're kind of able to develop. They have a lot of capital as well. Yeah, and you know something that a lot of these companies recently are doing, which is very very smart in my opinion. Um, a lot of these companies that is that have uh, recently run over the past week or you know, at least a couple of months, I've been doing offerings lately. They're taking advantage of this movement and getting money in return to further you know, excel their business in the future, which I think is a very smart idea on their behalf. Um, next one I wanna do is Palantir. This is one of my favorites going into next year. Um, this one right here, these, this is just a trend line I drew. You know, it's kind of been holding to form at least over the past month or two. 
uh, since the beginning of November off that start of the run. And you can see here that it's been truly grinding up this channel, uh, this trend line, and riding this 14 SMA for dip bottoms here as well, the green line going across it. And I'm looking for a breakout over 30, um, actually breakout over 29 going into 30, possibly this week. And we have long-term shares, we have long-term calls. And I'm looking to, well, these are the plays we have right now, the February 2021 20, and the May 21, as well as shares. Uh, for Jemaya, we're just looking for long dated shares, you know, going six months out. Uh, sorry, long dated calls going six months out and shares that we already have. So yeah, these are two of my favorite stocks going to the new year, uh, potential growth stocks. And another favorite here. Uh, so this one I could I could talk a lot about. Uh, X E X P Y. I mean E X P I. Um, it's a real estate company, and they're growing exponentially. I've been on a couple meetings with them. Uh, I have a couple of agent uh, friends who are agents in the company. They say you know they're treated very well. They get a lot of incentives, as well as you know. It's just a growing company and they're really expanding in all different countries. They actually just released in, I believe, Germany. Don't uh, take me for a word on that one, but I think it was Germany. I know they have released over a couple of countries in the past week or so. So they're really expanding. And as you can see, their stock is expanding as well. I would like to see a pullback here, possibly to around 60. And I want to grab long-term shares and calls. I think this could definitely be a hundred dollar stock by June of next year. So give it, you know, six, seven months and we could be looking at a nice, you know, 40 or 50% gain there. Like I said, I, I, everyone that I know that works for this company has, you know, really talked about it a lot going forward and they're really growing. I've talked to the CEO. Um, like I said, I've been on a couple calls with them. Um, cause I actually wanted to get a license and I, I heard that it was a great company from the agents that I talked to. So here is a favorite. I know Bully wants to talk about this one too. Amazon, we're getting a nice wedge pattern here, ran into the supply here, you know, give or take 20 to $30. Cause this is a big moving stock. You could get an average move of, let's just say 50 to a hundred dollars a day. And you can see we're riding this trend line up now. We held these key levels, we're in the demand zone and you know, look for it to hold 3,100 and that'll be a good key. Once this breaks out, we're looking for 3,400, 3,500, so a 300 to $400 move from where we are right now and possibly even higher. Tech has been consolidating for a long time. If you look at Facebook, Apple, you know, et cetera. And this is one that definitely is one to look at going forward. And I know it's a bit pricey, uh, option wise as well. So, you know, it is something that kind of stinks in that regard, but it, it definitely will give you a big chunk of change if you get it on in, in the right time and in the right place. We'll go into the next one. I have a couple more here and then we'll go back and I know Bully wants to talk about some of these too. So we'll go into APPS. Um, sadly, this is one we had around $2 and that was at least a year ago or at least six months ago, eight months ago. And you can see it from here in March, it was around that area. And from here, it's gone all the way up to $44. This was a fundamental stock. The financials were growing and turning around. The company was doing very well and continuing to you know, exercise their plan going forward, and they have done so as it shows in the stock. You could see a nice ascending triangle forming here, and we're kind of at a, a level that we're holding right around the 40, 42 range. Um, break under 40, I, I'd look for, you know, downside, but I think we're going to push higher into this 50 range and go for all time highs. Uh, all time high right now was 46. I want to look at uh, calls here going into January 15th, $50 calls. Looking for a breakout over the 45, pushing into the 50 over the next two weeks. Rocket is another one that we like for the long term. This one here, you can see I kind of drew this out. Um, you can see an inverted head and shoulders, this being the left uh, shoulder. 
this being the head, this being the right shoulder. And we're looking for a lot of these stocks lately. For example, let me just show you a snap. So they break out of their IPO highs. Where is snap? Okay. So let's just say, you know, their IPO highs from before, you know, 20 when it IPO'd, IPO'd around 15, you know, stuff like that. And it just continues higher and higher and higher. And that's what I want to look at here. Um, we have the inverted head and shoulders. We have an IPO high of around, what is it, 34, 35. You know, I'm just looking for a break into 25 here, trying to go into 30. And over the next six months, breaking into that 35 range. And that's where our calls and shares will work out. Looking into June 18, 2021, 30 calls, as well as shares for a long-term hold over the next couple of months. Okay, uh, one second, let me just fix something out here. Okay. There we go, okay, I'm back. Uh, I'll go back, I'll go back. I didn't see that. I don't know why that happened actually, to be honest. Uh, let's check out Amazon real quick. Amazon, you want me to go back? Okay. Yeah, let's look at Amazon. So, Was there Amazon, any others that you wanted to go back to too? Just let me know. No, this is fine, because we're, we're like right into the, the stocks that I was kind of looking at too. So. Amazon, you got to be careful with the chop. You know, that trend line is a good spot to get in tomorrow. You know, be, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it gapped up tomorrow uh, just because the market, you know, we'll see if it's if it, if it holds or if it fades. But um, be careful with Amazon. Plot your horizontal, you know, resistance and supply levels and look for the macro ones uh, to be kind of your entry points because you, you don't want to get caught in the chop if you're trading options. And then, you know, the, the other if you're trading commons, then, you know, just grab it because it won't matter. It's pennies on the dollar compared to the move. Um, and that's all I had for Amazon. You can see the wedge there. And if you go out to the weekly chart or the monthly chart, it, you know, it looks, looks pretty nice too. Yeah, you can see the same thing here. Basically, you know, consolidation over the past couple of months. And to go back, you know, I said the same thing for these other tech stocks. You got Facebook doing the same thing. Apple did the same thing. And it started to wake up a couple uh, last week. And you can see that same exact thing. Docu as well, yeah. Yep, Microsoft, yeah, Docu, you know, all these tech or all these, you know, basically all these stocks that revolved around the coronavirus, you know, pushed higher and now they're consolidating. For example, like you said, Docu, yeah, same exact thing. Um, next one I had was Shop, so Shopify. And you can see the same exact thing here on the weekly. Um, now, if we go into the daily, you can see another you know pattern here. So I drew this again. You could you could say this is a inverted head and shoulders here as well. You could see the demand zone around here as well as it held you know pretty well. And I drew a trend line over here, you know, acting as a resistance. And I'm looking for a breakout over this 1100, a clean breakout and hold pushing into 1400 to 1500 over the next six to eight months. I want to look for long shares here and I want to look for long data calls. I think I wrote down April 16th, 1500 calls. So these are a lot of money, but it's definitely something to look at, you know, kind of pricey like Amazon, but it, it's definitely still something to look at going forward. And at least they're long term, so you won't get killed on, you know, small pullbacks and stuff like that. Yeah, when that occurs on shop, I'm going to be playing weeklies. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of you know the big premium associated with the price tag on that one, but I will definitely yeah. play weeklies because it'll be a nice move, like you're saying. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they do, yeah. they do definitely have a big price tag, and that that's the one thing that draws me away from it, just like Amazon. But you know, when once yeah. it does move, you get you get you get paid out in that regard. Exactly. Um, Skyworks. I know you like this one, so I'll, I'll let you take it over if you want. Yeah, these guys look good. I have a, a line drawn, like I was saying, on that stochastic RSI and kind of also on the RSI as well. Just the trend line, uh, in, you know, since like October. Uh, you can even go back to September. Yeah, like stuff like that, yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, and I'm just looking for a bounce. You know, you can see that demand zone right there. It's very strong. And I expect this stock to only continue to go up as it's going to become more relevant as 5G, you know, everything is going to have to catch up to 5G, right? And so this is this is a 5G play. So using that logic, I haven't done any fundamental looks into them. This is just looking at the chart, seeing kind of this upward channel it's trading in and it's coming back down towards the bottom of it in this nice demand zone. So uh, definitely going to be looking for some calls, probably, you know, a month's time, two months' time. I won't be doing leaps like uh, you guys will, but those are going to be really nice too because I expect these guys to get pretty big. Um, you know, 5G is going to be pretty big, so I don't see why they would, you know, not be. They're positioned pretty well, so that's what I got for them. Those are those are the uh, entry points I'm watching too. Anything basically like a, you know, tomorrow I wouldn't be surprised if we, you know, kind of opened up. Um, but yeah, anytime it comes into these zones, you know, these are the the, the things that I'm watching. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. And uh, what I had here was you could look, you know, for a shorter term, month out, you could look for January 15th, 150 to play that little uh, bounce up. And long term, you could look for May 21st, 175, as well as shares. So now let's go into the next one. I know you like this one as well. Um, I was just drawing in line. So don't, you know, take me on this one at least. But you can see this has been holding pretty well strongly and down here this one's been acting you know strong as well so you could be looking at a nice bottom around this area let's just say 30 to 34 where we have this uh, demand zone a mini demand zone here and we could be looking for a push back up the all-time high was 52 about we could be looking for a push back up into this 40 level see if we could you know grow into a new channel or at least a new uptrend um, but the uptrend currently is still intact. We just are trying to find that bottom to continue higher now. And, you know, key levels above where it got stuck at before was that 40, 39 to 40 range. So that's what we're looking at there. Um, throw the weekly on real quick too. Yep. Oh, yeah. So yeah, this is a new stock, new IPO stock in September. So. We got a three candle pullback right to the half level of that candle, basically right around that half level, 40 to 50%. So it could be that last week was the last week before we start to see a reversal. Let's see the, uh, the other daily in the raindrop. Yep. Cool. So we have, uh, you know, if it does, you know, break this line, we can look to, you know, the next zone down. Um, I have a position in these guys and I'm, I've started it and it's, you know, like you mentioned, those January calls. Uh, and I'll add to it because I, you know, if, it, if it opens right tomorrow, then I'll obviously be down. But, um, you know, just I do like these guys to recover. I was talking to a buddy of mine that's in computer science uh, and he says that, you know, Corsair or whatever, however you say their name, you know, they're, they're really good people or company, whatever their, you know, business model. Um, and so, you know, I'm watching these guys. And like you said, they're new IPO. They've been around for a while, but they're a new publicly traded company. They had a nice fierce run up, nice, you know, healthy pullback. Uh, and so we'll see. Um, I'll be watching these daily uh, raindrop candles and the two hour raindrop candles looking for signs of a reversal. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, those inverted bullish raindrops. Yeah, I agree. And I think this could definitely be, you know, possibly even a nice mid to, uh, mid to long term hold here going into new all time highs. So it's definitely something to look at. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll go over this play too. Um, so this is just a penny play that we have. Um, fundamentally, um, and financially, it, it's turning around and they're growing. Um, the stock has been growing as well. It's been holding, you know, decent patterns and continue to rise higher and make new bases. Um, this is something that we're holding for, you know, we got in around the 170 range and we're looking for a news play getting into the two plus range, you know, 20, 40 percent and, you know, trying to make money off of that, or at least continue to, to hold it until the next earnings and, you know, see an increase in earnings in that regard. So, the reason why we got into this was, you know, quarter over quarter EPS and quarter over quarter revenue has been growing over the past two to three quarters. So that's good. Low debt and a good amount of cash to support the business. So they're, you know, turning around in that regard. And that's why we like this play. Um, what else do you want to go over, uh, Caleb? 
Uh, so actually, if you go back to CRSR and you go to the four hour chart, I just pulled mine up and it, I had something else I wanted to say. So you can see that, uh, yeah, on the four hour, you see that capital candle that uh, the, it's basically come back down to meet the base of, you know, the start of that trend. It's a nice big green candle. Uh, it's actually, you know, bounces right off your trend line. That's where, of course, you know, the CRSR explodes up mm -hmm. uh, November 19th. So right there, I'm watching that demand zone right there. It's a uh, yeah, November 19th area. Right about there, yeah. Yeah. So I've got a demand zone right there with that, uh, you know, that consolidation candle before it. Uh, and so I'm actually looking at the four hour and it looks quite bullish. So I think that, you know, we might, we might be seeing some signs of life soon. I've got the anchor VWAPs up and we've got supply above. So we'll see it. I don't know. I, I think this is a really good one to keep an eye on. And I really love how bottomed out these stochastics are. And if you look at the RSI, yeah. Uh, it's really cooled down, uh, and so you know I don't th I don't think that these guys are just going to get keep you know getting beat down. They're gonna they're gonna stock go up, stock go down. Man. I mean, they're gonna get beat down, and they're gonna have a nice nice bounce back. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, another one that we've talked about earlier in the in the day, you know, this is one that I truly love. I know a lot of people in the room truly love, uh, especially long term and people who have actually worked for the company. Um, this has a lot of government contracts and there's a lot to be said about this company. I actually, you could kind of see, if you look at this, you know, you could see a kind of like flag forming here. Let's just, you know, for shits and giggles, you know, not that this is the exact line, but you could see that kind of pattern here, like a triangle forming here. And we're looking for a break over that 30 for a key breakout going into the new all-time highs and i think this one's going to really be a big winner over the next few months next few weeks and it's truly something to watch going forward um we're loaded in the february calls and the uh longer term calls as well as share so i i you know i just want to express this one a lot and i think it, it i really do think it's going to be a nice winner going forward uh one other thing to talk about is NEO. So this is another one I want to get on the long term. I'll, you know, the trend tonight for me, at least, is long terms. Um, funny to say when ES is so high right now, but, you know, you got to be buying these stocks when they're in their dips and continue to ride the trend until it's broken. Um, and this one just did an offering, like I said, early in the night as well. You know. These companies that have, you know, grown over the past few weeks, and then their management decided to do an offering to further excel the business and invest in the business further. I think it was a very smart idea to add capital to the company that they could use going forward. And I want to be a buyer around this area, 38 to 40, um, share wise and long term wise, going two to three years out on calls for Neo. Um, it's one of the obviously Tesla's the leader. But NEO is definitely top three in that category. Um, they're already producing cars. They're already selling cars. They already have, you know, everything set up in that regard. And um, they have, you know, Chinese, you know, contracts and government contracts with them. So I, this is where I'm looking at this play to, you know, boost higher, possibly into the 75 to 100 range. And, you know, going forward, electric vehicles, you know, possibly electric airplanes, but, you know, just everything electric going forward um, over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, that's where a lot of these stocks are going to grow and, you know, become very nice. So that's what I'm looking at here from now into the future and trying to get grab onto them now before they go up too much. So this is something to look at. And sadly, this is another one that we had from $2. We had this around 198 and I sold around four to five dollars, and as you could see, it's went up since here. So two of those plays around two dollars that I had was Neo and APPS, uh, something I gotta be able to hold on to going forward. Um, and just to add a little bit on Neo, just for a little bit of context on you know in terms of market and and market cap, China has more driving age population than the United States does have people. So you know. Correct. Think about, you know, they, they can, you know, as soon as the scale up capacity is there, you know, it's not like they're going to have to find out, oh no, who we're going to sell our cars to, you know, they got people, they're waiting. So, you know, 
and and the you know Chinese government is going to subsidize it. And like you said, you know, there's lots of government contracts, lots of government money, um, and you know the, the Chinese uh, government has kind of professed their love for Neo in kind of many symbolic ways. So uh, I, I like them too going forward. They're going to be they're going to be too big. Yeah, it's definitely something to look at going forward. Um, what else do you want to go over? Uh, let me see. I got a, a small list oh, right here. I know you want to go over uh, Home Depot for Home sure. Home Depot, you have DraftKings. Yeah. We could go over as well. Um, <coughs> let's see. Boeing. Um, probably touch on Fubo. Fubo, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really, you know, touch for a little bit. It, it had a really nice run. It needs to consolidate and pull back. Um, yeah, a strong um, pullback would be to that twenty-two to twenty-three uh, range. Yeah, yeah. What a five-dollar pull down. Yeah, and that would, you know, that would be pretty good. And and I was looking at the, uh, you know, the raindrops and stuff. And so that volume shelf is sitting on right there. You know, it doesn't want to give it up. And so it'll be kind of interesting the next few days. I still have all my commons and I have some leaps still and I'm going to hold them. Um, but, you know, all my short-term stuff, I'm out of. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I could see it, you know, basically just defying all, you know, all thoughts that are going to happen. It, it could just, you know, resume its upward path. The offering that was... Uh, everybody was kind of looking at and stuff like that. And that was a revised offering. That was not, you know, like a brand new offering. That was something that was already out there. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing kind of bounce just like plug did kind of, you know, it came back down for a couple of days and then, you know, went, took right back off the way. So um, I'm watching Fubo, but like I said, I'm not in anything short term. I have my commons and I have everything else for long term, but that's all I'm doing. Yeah. And, you know, Fubo is another one of those companies that, you know, excelled in stock price over the last couple of weeks and then did the offering. So like I said, another smart move on these companies that are doing that recently. It truly we is. Probably, we should probably touch on BLNK. Um, I wouldn't chase into this one, but- Wait, which one? Uh, BLNK. Okay, Blink. Wait, no, sorry, what was it? CLSK, my bad. Blink Spark. Uh, we, we, we added all this, I think at like seven or eight. Um, and we've just been kind of waiting patiently. They've been lagging behind. Uh, and you can see now, you know, they're starting to, it's a, kind of a scary wick up there. Um, but, you know, these guys held two offerings after their last two runs, like back to back, uh, had a long consolidation period. And you can see the, the raindrops here, the most recent raindrops, kind of scary. You can see sellers stepping in, driving the price down at the bottom of the period. That's not what you would like to see if you're a bull. Uh, and, and guess what? It's got plenty of room to retrace and that would be healthy for it. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is very trending. The economy tomorrow is going to be very happy on the stimulus news, I think. Uh, futures, if they hold, or I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, but, you know, I, if you, if, I don't know if you guys have noticed, electric vehicles and, uh, I mean, Tesla does its own thing every day, but electric vehicles and weed and all that stuff, the rotation has kind of been out of those, you know, in my opinion, the last few days. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, what happens going forward, if we see another rotation or if everything just straight, you know, cranks it up. Uh, like we've seen the last couple of days. Okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, okay. Let's see. What else do you want to get in here? Uh, let's pull up AMD real quick. AMD. Okay. Yeah, so for AMD, uh, you can see the bottom of that kind of W formation right there. That's like the weekly uh, demand zone that I have drawn. Um, uh, which one? Sorry. Oh, sorry. So you see like where that double bottom is kind of in that W pattern. Um, yeah, right here. Yeah, so that's kind of where I have my demand zone, you know, right in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm kind of watching AMD because I have it sitting in a supply zone. And it's just been kind of coiling and bouncing off the bottom of my supply zone. So, you know, whenever something, something is doing that, it's telling me basically that, you know, it's using that supply zone, which is traditionally resistant. It's now basing, uh, you know, and it's, it's got some um, basically support now in what used to be resistance. And so that's signaling, you know, it's ready for A, a leg higher or, you know, B, it is actually going to fall. And it's just up here because, you know, the, 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 the trend hadn't weakened out yet enough. Um, but I do think that we could see a push over, you know, 100. And then once we get to 100 on AMD, I think that, you know, it's not, it's just, it's going to be an open water. So it could cruise right to, you know, 110, 115. Um, but yeah. I do think AMD in this next, you know, week and a half, two weeks, I think it's going to find 100 bucks pretty easily. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that uh, going forward for this one too. And you can see if you draw that trend line uh, since, you know, the beginning of November, you can kind of see, uh, you know, it's been, it's been, 
chugging pretty good, you know, up that double bottom it had, uh, or triple bottom, quadruple bottom, who knows how many bottoms that is right there. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's been affecting that trend line. I, I wouldn't, you know, make any trades take off based off that trend line. I would use all the other tools that we have, you know, like the raindrops and the AP wop to see who's in control. Uh, stochastics are pretty favorable. They're coming back down on a macro. I would be interested to see the weekly. Uh, and then, you know, I'd, I'd be looking at, you know, the two hour to make my decision. Um, yeah, I got a nice. This one broke out of the consolidation and is continuing higher here. Yeah, this one paid us the last because we, uh, I think it was like two or three weeks ago, it was on our radar. And then that week it, it did really well. Um, CRM looks good too. You already touched on them pretty well though. And then also, you know what? Uh, what was that other one, the fake meat, uh, the other one that AJ likes a lot, um, Beyond, Beyond. And then there's another one that I was looking at, and he had mentioned it to me. It's uh, it's like Beyond, but it's smaller, and I don't have the ticker for that. Uh, let me see if I can find it. While, while here. Uh, ch 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 uh, I don't see anything in his long term right now. I do remember him talking about it too, actually. I don't know what it's called. Um, I'll find it and I'll post it on, uh, you know, the Discord and the Twitter and the stock twit. Yeah, I don't know what it's called, but I, I do know what you're talking about in that regard. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Let's see. Let me pull the chart up. It looks the same. It might be. Oh, man, he's so quick, man. I swear. Let's see. Shake Shack. No, that's not it. No, oh. not Shake Shack. I haven't had Shake Shack in a while. <laughs> Their stochastics look pretty good too, though. And they're yeah, they had a uh, inside bar on the week on the four hour chart. Let's see. Yeah, Shake Shack actually does not look bad. That's kind of funny. Yeah, DraftKings, I really like how, you know, you can see the stochastics, the blue crossover on the, you know, on November 20th, you see that breakout. Um, and you had the fast crossover, the, the slow, and it, you know, it ran all the way up. Uh, and then it, the momentum kind of stayed pretty tough. You can see, you know, when, when the blue is crossed over the red, the fast over the slow, and it maintains, you know, even when it's the price is dipping, it kind of shows you that overall, it's still kind of in an upward trend. You know, the momentum is still going up. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I don't take trades based off the stochastic RSI, but DraftKings does look pretty good. And, you know, it's, it's clearly reversed. It's got a higher low a couple times. Uh, and there's some pretty good trend lines that you could draw in there. And I even kind of like, uh, I kind of like drawing that trend line from the, you know, the reversal right there on uh, like, what is it? Yeah. Between October. Yeah. Right there. The trend line there to where we are now. And then the trend line from the peak down to, you know, the uh, current market price above it. Um, and that looks, you know, pretty good. Um, and DraftKings, I think everybody is pretty bullish on DraftKings. The sports betting uh, industry is, you know, this is a disruptive space for these guys. So I think that's where their money comes in. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely another one I like long term a lot for sure. Um, like I said, I think this one's going to be a hundred dollar stock too. There's a lot of ones that I said tonight that are going to be a hundred dollar stocks. Um, but going forward, this one definitely, you know, outpaces FanDuel. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever been to, you know, one of the sports books, let's just say in Las Vegas, New Jersey, I'm trying to think of, you know, you know, big sporting, you know, towns, but um, DraftKings sports book, sports books, you know, in casinos and stuff like that, they're very nice. You know, they attract people and even the app, it's just so easy. You know, you, everyone's thinking about sports betting um, for DraftKings going forward, but even just their daily fantasy, you know, is more attracting than FanDuel, in my opinion. You know, there's a lot of incentives as well. And, you know, me personally, I use the uh, daily fantasy for football, for example, today and stuff like that. And I prefer uh, DraftKings definitely over FanDuel. And it's much easier to, you know, move around. And I just understand it a lot more. And, um, yeah, oh, I, I truly think this will definitely, you know, go up, especially with New York, with that news on Friday or Thursday about New York, possibly. Um, 
wanting to add sports betting now because of taxes over this uh, coronavirus. So that's very interesting. But, you know, either way, this is just going to expand the sports betting over, you know, states over the next couple of years. So I think it'll, I think it'll all be legal in the next five years, at least over like 75% of the states. So it's definitely something to look at. And uh, what were you going to say, Caleb? Sorry. Oh, you're good. Uh, Tesla, I think, actually looks fairly interesting here, too. And they have their news of the S&P inclusion coming up, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So one thing to talk about that is usually when inclusions are done, you know, they kind of take a dip. Running up to it, they'll run up to it. But once it's done, they'll take a dip um, because everyone's buying in now for the inclusion. So December 21st, we could look at a possible, you know, down draw or maybe even a day or two before or maybe even a day or two after. So somewhere in that like three to four day trading range, we could be looking at a downturn for Tesla. It's something to look at going forward. So the one hour chart looks especially interesting. It kind of almost looks, uh, yeah, it gives it a different look than the chart that you just saw. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that one, uh, you know, if you draw some, some lines from like, you know, the November 23rd area onward. Yeah, there you go. Those lines that you had, those are perfect. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it looks pretty good to me. And then I also see, you know, the, the consolidation stands about, what was that, December 8th? And I have on my chart a trend line, you know, from the top of that December 8th candle or, uh, with that big red candle up there. Going down here. Yep. And then another one from uh, where that trend line ends down to, you know, the capital candle and that width below it. And it's sitting on, you know, if you adjust the volume by price to somewhere around November 25th, uh, it's sitting on, you know, considerable volume shelf. Yeah, somewhere like that would work. There you go. Perfect. I'll probably start at like the start of the uptrend over here, possibly. Yeah. And you can see. Oh, yeah, just, you can definitely got um, yeah. support and in so the Tesla's, area. Tesla's just really fun to play. You can also throw on EMAs if we want to just, you know, talk about how what, maybe we could play this real quick. Um, you know, because this is going to be something that gives you really large swings. And so if you can figure out how to enter and play it, you know, this could be extremely, you know, beneficial for you, especially, you know, because it's Christmas time, so. But at the same time, you know, you have to know how to play it. You have to have, you know, semi-reliable price action and candle reading skills, and then just throw on, throw on like a, a Uber, let's do like a, a five day, an eight day, a 15 and a 21 EMA. Just, you know, different time frames. really short, pretty short, medium short, and then medium. Um, just to kind of look at, you know, how it's been bouncing and acting. Uh, what do you want, five? Uh, let's do the, the EMA, though. Yeah, oh, so, uh, oh, you're good. Um, yeah, let's do a, a five, an eight. I haven't touched the indicators in a long time. <laughs> yeah, I don't really use them anymore. Um, yeah, the five, the eight. Uh, but it's kind of interesting when you're looking, you know, for plays like this. And then let's do like a, uh, an 11, a 15, and a 21. Where's the blue one? Hold on, the blue one didn't come up. So five eight fifteen twenty one or five eight thirteen twenty one. Yeah, that works. Thirteen twenty one is fine. So I think I just have an eight, a thirteen, and a twenty one, but. That works. You'll see like the same kind of shit. It's all on this little range right here. Yep. And this is on the four hour. So I know you were talking about the one hour. Let me go back. Yeah, so it's all right just above it. So give or take five dollars, and you'll be reaching through all these uh EMAs here. Yeah, and uh you can also throw on like a 15 minute chart too. That's and if you're looking at you know Tesla at open, oftentimes it'll dump and then it'll take right off. Um, for that, you know, I have a couple charts pulled up. I'll look at the one minute, the five minute, the fifteen. I don't ever trade it because Tesla is like, I mean, I've traded Tesla before and I've won and lost, so I prefer to you know just kind of watch most of the time. But um, you know, it, especially right now, it's so volatile that it's you know if you if you figure out you know when to buy in and you use your you know your candle stick reading to figure out you know on the one minute, three minute, five minute. You know, at a 15, if you're, you know, not running immediately at market open, uh, then you can get a good entries, uh, and, and it's really profitable. True. 
Yeah, Tesla is definitely one of those movers that continues higher and higher. I mean, just think of where it started. It was at, um, what was it, around 400 or 500 when it split. Now it's, you know, way higher than that. So it's crazy. Mm -hmm. it's definitely so a big the, uh, the, the other one I had in mind was PayPal, and I think that was about it. PayPal and Square, are kind of, I'm both, you know, bullish on both of those just because of how relevant blockchain and Bitcoin and all that's coming in play and those are you know two established players that are now you know bringing bitcoin and blockchain and all that you know that whole world onto their platform and so um very bullish on them for me mm -hmm. paypal yeah you can see there so i have a slightly different uh trend line instead of putting it at the top of that wick i have it at the green trend line above where you begin it i have it set at mm -hmm. the uh I ha yeah i have it set at the, the the head of the green capital candle prior to it uh no to the left to the left uh let's see august right. yeah right there and then just running through the bodies yeah there we go but lower sorry <laughs> so no, what i show is it's it's basing above the channel like somewhere around here down a little bit run it through yeah down 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 keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going right oh you mean basing sorry I, yeah, I yeah. so it's basing right there and it, on the weekly it's clean as day um, and then you can throw, throw, you know, throw the bottom of the channel on real quick, but it's clean as day. And this is, this is the start, you know, because the, the analysts, you know, it's always good to see them throwing their, their price targets up. But to me, they don't mean much. It's more of a psychological thing for the market, you know, cause it'll tell people what, what it's valued at. And so, you know, it'll say, oh, I can buy it now and it should go up all that stuff, but they should literally blow their earnings out of the water. Um, I probably won't play earnings, um, but, you know, I, I do think they're going to blow it out of the water. And I think that Square is going to do well, too. Square is bullish. They've both been just kind of making moves, retracing, making moves, retracing, uh, and, and basing in new supplies. So, yeah, and the PayPal, if you look at the stochastics, I mean, just look at it. You know, it's, that thing's ready. Um, but, you know, it, this, could take, this could take a couple of weeks to play out. Um, we played it last week. I'm going to probably play it again this week, and, you know, we'll – We'll definitely have all our charts out and you know our, you know our conviction laid out so that we can see you know why and when correct um anything else you want to go over no i think that's it man that's all i got for, for tonight okay um you know just want to end it off and check out where es is at and we're at 36.74 uh so we're riding this uh blue e uh blue sma 14 sma going up we had a three red candle, you know, three days in a row with red. Nice hammer here on this day. And it's possible we can test higher, especially with vaccine, uh, vaccine news this week and uh, possibly any other news. But, of course, we got to keep in those 3640 and 3620 levels. That could push us down, you know, further into 3500s. If not, we want to look to break this 37, I'll consider it 15, and go higher into 3721 and push higher there going to 3,800 3, and possibly even 4,000. Um, of course, with dips and, you know, pullbacks, but those are the overall, you know, end goals. Um, other than that, you know, thank you guys for joining. And uh, we'll be doing this every Sunday, like usual, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, have a great night. I'll be sending out the watch list to go along with this um, in a few moments. Thank you awesome. guys for, for doing this. Have a good night, you guys.